Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining us. Today, we are talking about currency exchange and international payment. Global real estate transactions often involve cross-border payments, legal requirements, and tax implications. When buying or selling property internationally, understanding currency exchange rates is crucial. Fluctuations can greatly impact final price, making it essential to work with experts, experts who specialize in navigating these complexities. Today, we have Eva Slavcheva, Senior Business Development Manager from MoneyCorp USA. The MoneyCorp team specializes in currency exchange and international payments, and they can help your customers save thousands compared to using a traditional bank. If you have any question or comments through the webinar, please put them in the chat or use the Q&A feature to be addressed later on. Original for from Bulgaria, Eva joined the MoneyCorp team in 2014 and has been instrumental in the company's expansion through the US. Specializing in personal money transfer, Eva has been directly working with individuals buying or selling properties internationally, emigrating or simply covering overseas living expenses. She currently manages global partnerships and MoneyCorp and loves helping Realtors grow their international business. Let's give a warm welcome to Eva Slavcheva. Thank you so much, Daniela. Thank you, Evan. It's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you all for joining. Um, I can't believe it's been almost 10 years for me at Money Corp, uh, 10 year anniversary coming up next month. I hope they have something nice planned for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go ahead and um, share my screen. Let's see here. Hope everyone can see that okay. Perfect, great. Well, yes, today I'd love to share a little bit about my world, my world of money, currency exchange and international payments. Um, I think we all are aware of global real estate. It's, it's all around us. We meet people that are coming and going, investing and moving money. But so often I see that the currency exchange piece gets overlooked, gets pushed as the last thing on the to-do list. And guys, that's not okay to do. Without the money, we can't make the investment. We can't get, we can't close. So it really shouldn't be the last on the to-do list. It should be a consideration towards the beginning. Um, I myself am from Bulgaria. My family moved here many years ago. We used the banks. I pre Previously to Money Corp, I always used a bank to move my money um, from here to there and never really thought too much about, is there another way? How much are they charging? And many people to this day still use the bank. So I'd love to introduce Money Corp to you, um, not just as a way to move money, but also as a resource, as a tool um, that you can use to grow your international, your international business. So if you haven't heard of us before, Money Corp has been around actually for quite a while, since 1979. The company started, the headquarters of, of Money Corp is in London, United Kingdom. We can help your clients exchange about 120 different currencies. It's not all of them around the world, but it certainly is a large chunk of them. We do have teams located in 10 different countries, and I myself um, am speaking to you from sunny Orlando, Florida today. We have a, um, a pretty large team here that handles personal client transfers. We are heavily regulated um, in every country we do business, we have to be, um, and funds are extremely safe and secure, and I can talk about that a little bit more detail in a little bit. Um, some of you or some of your clients might have worked with international payment companies in the past, there are a lot of them. They keep springing up. So it is important, no matter which one you choose to work with or your clients choose to work with, that you know that it's secure and you know that they're licensed. This is something that gets overlooked um, as well. Money Corp is licensed to help American clients in all states, um, licensed to help clients throughout Canada and many other countries. So make sure that the company you do choose to work with is actually licensed to do business. Um, one of the reasons that I personally love my team is our customer service. My team will go above and beyond for every client. It's not just an online platform where you click and send money. We really like to provide guidance, provide education, and really, um, really make sure that from start to finish, the clients are loving the service and feeling secure when, when moving money. 
these are a few of the locations where you can find MoneyCorp offices around the world. Now, bear in mind, this map just shows you where MoneyCorp physical locations, physical teams are located. That's not the places where we can um, cover and say, uh, cover money transfers. We can do a lot of countries and a lot of places that are not on this map. This is just where MoneyCorp has teams. So we try to cover different time zones and assist clients no matter where they are located. Our website is jam-packed with information. Look through it one night if you can't sleep. There's a lot of market updates, daily updates. If you're wondering why the US dollar went up or went down, um, you can check out the website and sometimes we're all looking for content, right? To share with our clients, to share with our followers. You might some, find some educational piece that you can share in an email blog with your clients. There's overseas property guides. Our team is always working on creating new content when it comes to international business. Um, a lot of what I'm going to talk about today is moving money for the reason of property purchase or property selling. But bear in mind, you can use an international payment company for anything, paying for a wedding abroad, retirement, pension, inheritance, buying that fancy yacht you've been thinking about. As long as it's moving money from one place to another, you can certainly utilize an international payments company. Corporate accounts is a big division as well. I work with individuals, but we do corporate as well. And um, that's actually a really big business in North America. There's so many corporations that have a reason to move money in or out of the US. So bear in mind that Money Corp can handle that as well. And if you are working with international clients, we all know that a lot of those international investors do like to take title under an LLC or under a trust. So that's something that can be handled under those corporate accounts as well. So let's get into it. What's the big difference between a currency exchange company and a bank? That's the question that uh, you know I had when I started at Money Corp. That's the question that a lot of my clients have. And I think it's important that you're aware of this and you help guide them through that process. Um, there are two fees that most people will experience when, when going through a traditional bank. One is the international wire fee. Um, I have Bank of America here in Florida. I think they charge me $65 per international wire. And oftentimes we think that's the cost of sending money internationally. But the real cost, the big cost and the hidden cost is the margin on that exchange rate. And that's something that's not going to be very forthcoming if you go to the bank and ask them. Um, I've done this many times. I've walked into a U.S. bank and I've asked for a life quote, I've asked for what exchange rate I'm gonna get between the euro and dollar if I were to send money to Europe today. And the bank teller will simply look you in the face and quote you the live rate of exchange that you see on Google or, you know, and they're not lying, they are telling you what the exchange rate is, but that is not the exchange rate you're actually getting when you're booking your transfer, when you're booking your exchange. And oftentimes a typical bank teller, um, you know, as educated as they might be on everyday banking, they are not well, versed in the international wire world. There's usually one specific person per bank branch that actually knows how to handle wires and transfers. And the third thing to be aware of is at a bank, you're getting the exchange rate of the day. You're walking in, you're subjecting yourself to getting whatever the market is at that point, and you're moving your money. Working with an international payments company, we specialize in this. It's all we do all day, every day. So you are immediately getting a far more competitive rate of exchange than a bank. And I'll give you a few examples to actually show you what that means. You're avoiding international wire fees because Money Corp is in US, in Canada, in Europe, in lots of countries. So it takes the international wire element out of it. Um, and again, I'll show you a few examples of this. Each client does get a dedicated personal currency dealer, which is huge. This is one person that's there to handhold them to give them not just life quotes on the exchange rate, but discuss their timeline, discuss their requirements. Um, we suggest to clients three to six months before closing is a good time to start working with Money Corp. There are some clients that contact us a year before or longer, um, you know, the big planners, and those are usually the very high net worth individuals, believe it or not. Um, but a dedicated currency dealer can watch the market on your behalf, can let you know if the rate is moving in your favor or against you. They can find things like, hey, there's an interest rate announcement. There's a, an employment data coming up next month. And this is what we think the U.S. dollar might do. So they, are, they don't have a crystal ball, but they certainly watch the market and are aware of the news and the pulse, the heartbeat. And they're keeping the clients updated so they can make better decisions on how and when to move money, which is, which is priceless. And then finally, with us, you can 
book exchange rates a little earlier, such as um, forward contracts, where you can lock into a rate of exchange for anywhere up to two years. If um, any of you remember uh, COVID, <laughs> and one of the things that COVID did was really rock the market. And we had an extremely high US dollar at that time. So a lot of very savvy investors, while I was freaking out trying to, you know, go shopping and buy um, disinfectant wipes, we had our high net worth individuals calling their dedicated currency dealers saying, how can I make money off of this? Can I lock in rates? What currency should I buy? And they certainly did. We had clients that purchased insane amount of euro and lots of other currencies. They had nothing to buy. They had no real investment lined up, but they were just taking advantage of the market. Those people purchased next year, a few months later. But watching the market can really, really um, end up making you money as well. So how does it work with Money Corp? If your client wants to use us, it's honestly a three to five minute online setup process. It could be over the phone. We have some clients that don't like technology. That's okay. We can help them over the phone or they can use the online platform. Um, the account setup is address and identity verification. That's done for compliance uh, purposes. Some clients might need to provide one proof of ID and one proof of address. Some clients might go through with a very easy address verification. The process is simple. They set up a free Money Corp account, no cost, no obligation, no need to keep money on account with us. We have some clients that open an account and just get information, just speak with a currency dealer. They might never end up using the account. Um, we get it, plans change, but stay informed on the market and at least compare exchange rates. You discuss your requirement with the currency dealer, you secure your exchange rate when you're ready, you fund your Money Corp account, and we send the payment on to the recipient. And I'll show you an example of how that works. We will take Emily from France. She's buying a property in New York for 500,000. I probably should have used a higher amount because I think it's a little more expensive over in New York, but hey, you know, I'm from Florida. <laughs> but um, it, the, essentially the higher the amount, the more the savings, but we'll use 500. 500,000 for that one. She's buying a property in New York and that's the amount of US dollars she needs. If she were to go to her local bank in France, she'll likely get an exchange rate of 1.04 and she'll have to spend about 480,000 euros to buy that property. If she were to quickly get an exchange rate from Money Corp, she's getting 107 on the exchange rate and spending 467,000. So it's a pretty significant amount of savings. Um, that could be closing costs, that, you name it, but that's a very typical amount of savings. European banks, I would say, take a margin of about 4 5%, 3 to 5% margin. U.S. banks are higher. U.S. banks are really bad when it comes to currency exchange specifically. They are known to take extremely high margins. We've seen them go 6 7%. Canadian banks, we've seen between two to 3%. It really varies from country to country, but regardless of where your client is from, an international payments company will be able to beat the exchange rate provided by a bank. Um, I've had clients, non-believers, who tell me I'm a VIP client and I have a personal bank manager and they take care of me and I pay no fees and I pay no margins. And when we get down to comparing apples to apples and amounts for amounts, they're eyes pop out of their head when they realize how much they were being charged. Maybe they were getting 1% less than the guy next to them, but they're still paying a lot of money on that. So always worth making that comparison. And something to note here in this example is Emily from France, when she goes to send money to New York for that property purchase, she's not wiring money from her bank account in France over to the US. She's just moving her euros from her bank in France to Money Corp's account in France. So she's making a domestic payment of euros. We convert her euros to dollars and we send those dollars directly to the title company, for example, the closing agent in US. We can send to any recipient bank account that she provides us. We can even send to multiple recipient accounts, um, like personal, friends, family, wherever she sends. So it's a very smooth process. Most of our international clients do not have a U.S. bank account anyways when they are in the process of, of buying. Some set one up, some find it really difficult. Either way, we don't require them to. We can send it directly to the title company for closing. Now, we know that Emily is buying this property in New York, right? But why did she wait two days before closing to wire her money? I mean, a lot of people do that, but what if she planned a little bit earlier? What if she purchased her dollars back in January when the exchange rate was 109? 
what if she actually purchased her dollars in December when the exchange rate was 111? Do you guys see how much difference she's saving? And we're just talking a few months. If you think about a typical transaction, especially with an international client, it could be one year from the moment they start looking to the time they close. You know, it could be several months. It's not necessarily a quick and easy process. So I encourage clients always start early. Emily could have easily contacted Money Corp in December. She could have easily purchased the dollars and held them on account with us ready for closing. And then when the closing comes in March, she just tells Money Corp, go ahead and send my dollars. This not only saves her money, but it protects her from adverse currency fluctuations. Sometimes all it takes is a new world, you know, global news alert, something bad going on in the world. And we see that market shift. And we've seen clients not being able to close because the exchange rate moved against them. That property is no longer a good investment. Some clients can't afford to spend an extra forty thousand dollars. You know, it's not it's no longer feasible for them. So that's why things such as targeting a rate, watch orders, limit orders, forward contracts, those things can really, really come in handy. Those are things that banks just don't offer. So working with an international company can not only save your clients money, but really make sure that the closing actually happens. And I have hundreds of examples of where things have gone really right and things have gone really wrong because clients just didn't plan ahead. This is a quick look between the euro and US dollar over the last, I guess, year from, from March 2023 through here. It kind of looks like ski, slo ski slopes, right? So if you're a regular client really not paying attention to this, how are you to know is it a good time? Is it not a good time? Am I spending a lot of money to buy this property? Am I not? Um, generally speaking, a high US dollar is, you know, you can kind of watch the market to decide who does it benefit. A high US dollar means that your international buyers are spending more to buy those properties in the US. A high US dollar also means that your foreign national sellers is a great time for them. They want to sell their US properties. They want to repatriate that money to home countries because now they're making money off of this. A low US dollar is good for your international buyer. So if you just keep an eye on the market a little bit, you can actually go, oh, I should, I should contact my Canadian sellers or I should contact these people. Exchange rates fluctuate by a million things. It could be big things, big news, small news. This year it's a presidential election year, right? So we certainly have movements that will come our way. With it being a presidential election year, what we always see is um, people start speculating, you know, on the market, which also speculation also moves rates just without anything actually happening. Um, but also what we see in presidential election years is we see a massive amount of Americans who move out. Pretty much half of America will be happy with the choice. Half of America will be unhappy with the choice regardless. And we do see a lot of Americans who decide to move out. So again, that's something to be aware of in real estate. You're going to have a lot of sellers and a lot of people looking to invest abroad. Speaking of sellers, this is something that we see all the time. And I think the process for foreign national selling is a lot harder than a foreign national buying in the U.S. And I hear this from them all the time. Um, you know, there's perp the tax withholding. There's a, there's a lot more hoops to jump through in selling. So I think it's a really important process to be aware of as well. And again, in the last few years, this is the majority of the transactions that I've seen has been foreign nationals selling their, their U.S. homes and sending funds back to home countries. So we'll take um, David from U.S. and or sorry, David from U.K., who is selling his U.S. home. He has the proceeds. They're with title company and title company is ready to, to send David's proceeds. Now, there's always a few choices at closing, right? David, a lot of the time, our foreign national sellers are not physically here for closing. They're usually in their home country. And so a lot of the time, the client might say, hey, just put it in my U.S. bank. Here's the details. I don't need it right now. You know, I'll worry about that money later. Well, when the client does that, chances are their money gets stuck in that U.S. bank. And chances are no one stops to tell them that this will happen. There is something called the U.S. Patriot Act, and you can read about it on FinCEN.gov. There's pages and pages about it. Um, I wouldn't suggest that you necessarily share that with your client because, in my opinion, the verbiage is a bit strong. Um, but just be aware of it. And this is something that U.S. banks do enforce. And to my knowledge, it's going to get stricter and stricter. David needs to be physically here at his U.S. bank in order to initiate that international wire transfer, whether he's looking to move 5000 or the full amount. 
And oftentimes the title company, the agent, you know, no one shares that information with David because technically it's no one's job or concern. Everybody just wants to close, right? Well, David's going to be quite unhappy when he finds about this. <laughs> and chances are he's going to call the agent first, although it's not the realtor's fault whatsoever, but he's got to be angry at someone. So please ask your foreign national sellers the question, what do you plan to do with the proceeds? Are you leaving it in the U.S. because you'll reinvest it? You know, that's fair. That makes sense. Are you leaving it in the U.S. because you're not happy with the exchange rate? Are you leaving it in the U.S. because you're just too lazy to think about it? Um, because this is a question that they should be aware of. And during COVID, for example, we had clients that couldn't travel here, even if they wanted to. So this is pretty important. And you could be the literally the superhero for your foreign national sellers if you tell them this. Now, David might also say to the title company, I'm from England. I have a bank account here. Send my money directly to my bank in London. Thank you very much. Now, some title companies will do this. Some title companies will say no. That If you are working with international clients, it's really important that you check that your title company, you know, your mortgage, all the people in your circle, they are your go-tos. You have to make sure that they're able and knowledgeable on working with international clients. They might be the best title company for local closings. They might not be the best title company for international. So ask your title company, do you handle international wires? Do you hold FERPTA? You know, ask all the questions before you start the process so that you don't end up in a sticky situation later on. Now, if the title company sends the proceeds to David's bank account in England, the good news is he'll get money, right? He'll have access to his money. But the bad news is the title company, no matter who they are, they are using a U.S. bank in the background. And a U.S. bank is handling the exchange and the transfer of the money. The title company is not making a profit from this but the U.S. bank in the background most certainly is. And no one's going to stop and say, hey, David, is it okay if we take a 5% margin and a $60 fee and, you know, exchange rate today is not really great for you, but we're going to do it anyway. You know, David has no control over this. He's just going to get some money and then do the math and figure out that he's missing thousands from his proceeds. And it's kind of late to do anything about it at that point. Now, he could open a Money Corp account, an international payments account, even if it's the morning before closing. And this happens a lot. <laughs> and uh, I much prefer it to be the week before closing, but hey, the morning of closing works too, right? Um, we set up that account for David. We generate US dollar Money Corp account details, and we provide those details to the title company for closing. The title company is happy because now they're making a domestic payment. So it's easy. They have a routing number, an account number. They're sending it locally. David receives his US dollars in his Money Corp account same day. The other good news is David now has the power to decide how and when to exchange that money. I mean, who says that he should exchange his money just because his closing is set for March you know, 30th? What if the exchange rate is horrible on March 30th? So David can actually hold his US dollars on account for a day, for a week, for a year. There's no time limit. And we can watch the exchange rate for him and he can decide when and how to exchange and transfer that money a good exchange rate, no international fees, um, and you know, watch the market to make sure it's favorable for him. He can do it in parts. He can even decide, hey, I'm going to send some of it back to London. I think I'm going to buy a house in Spain. I think I'm going to send some to my niece in Dubai. You know, whatever he wants to do with it, he has to pick up the phone, speak with his money corp currency dealer, arrange the exchanges and transfers, or use our online platform. And he can get this done even if he's on a cruise. He doesn't have to be physically at one of our offices. So this is really important. It not only saves your clients money, but it really makes sure that, that their funds are not stuck. And I, I can't um, stress that enough because I see it happen all the time. And I have clients who I tell this information to and they shake their head and they go, it's my money. No one can tell me what to do with it. Okay. Um, so just bear in mind. Now, you have a lot of sellers who take title under an LLC or under a trust, right? And it's very easy to do when you're buying the home. But when you're selling the home, chances are if the property is titled David Smith LLC, the title company is required to release the proceeds into an account called David Smith LLC, right? Or David Smith Trust, whatever it is. And most of the time, David, the client, does not have a bank account called David Smith LLC because they never cared to set one up. Maybe it was like a property they were renting out. They never really cared. It wasn't really a real business. It was kind of just done for tax purposes. 
Well, the title company still needs David Smith LLC account in order to release those proceeds. So Money Corp can open an account under an LLC, under a trust. I definitely cannot do it the morning of closing, but I need at least one or two business days before and we can get that done. So again, ask those questions before closing. It will make the process so much smoother for your sellers. Um, it will also show them that you are very well versed in the global real estate world that you've done this before. And again, check with your title company to make sure they are capable and have previously worked with, with international clients, really important. Now, when we talk about security, and I know title companies are on board with this as well, and so are banks, and so are so many other companies right now, you have to be extra secure. Um, I cannot stress enough verbal verification of beneficiary account details. Um, we do this with our clients. We have enhanced uh, multi-factor authentication when clients log into their Money Corp accounts. Um, sometimes I joke that it's so secure that the client themselves can't log in because there's so many <laughs> text messages and verifications, but it's for security. Um, again, each client, when the account is getting set up, goes through um, identity and verification for compliance purposes. Um, and I know as a, as a realtor, sometimes these are clients that you might not have met in person. Um, you might have communicated over the phone via email if it's international clients. So um, if there's, I think it gives you an extra peace of mind as well, knowing that they have set up a money corp account, knowing that we are working with them. We've gone through that security verification with them. It should give you that extra peace of mind as well. And if there's ever a case where you've introduced a client to me, and I call you back and I go, I'm so sorry, we're not going to be able to onboard David Smith. That should be a big red flag to you that maybe you shouldn't be working with Mr. David Smith as well. Just saying. <laughs> um, but we do also have um, a lot of payment support teams in multiple countries so that even with the time zone differences, we can make sure to handle any payment queries, questions um, quickly and, and efficiently as well. Um, now, the last trend I want to talk about, we talked about the international investors, money coming into the U.S. We talked about foreign nationals who are selling their U.S. properties and sending funds back to home countries. But this is the one that has been forefront for us in the last two years. And this is a trend that I think will not slow down. Americans are buying abroad. They're buying a, a lot. Um we the, the places that we Money Corp is mostly sort of tracking and seeing where payments are going. Um, Portugal last year was by far number one. Portugal had an extremely popular golden visa program. Um, it was in the range of 280, 300,000. You were making an investment. You were getting a European residency in five years. I mean, it was a it was a no brainer. They were coming through my desk like like just buying bread. Like it was just one after another, incredible amount of people. And because it got so popular and raised prices in Portugal, that golden visa um, program in Portugal um, got changed. It's now at a little bit of a higher price and it's now structured a little bit differently. There's been a lot of um, chatter and websites that are saying golden visa is over in Portugal. Um, it's not over. It's just different. It's changed. It's still happening. There are still clients investing there. It's just a different way of, of investing. So Portugal was number one for us last year. This year, it seems to be France. I don't know if it's, you know, Emily in Paris Netflix show, um, but um, which I like, um, but there, France is extremely popular. Um, we I've, still... uh, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yes. Oh, Evan, you're muted. I think I may have read that Greece also may have a golden visa program, right? Yes. A lot of countries are now coming up with um, their version of golden visa because the Portugal one so, was so popular. Um, Hungary has just come with one. Greece has one that's that's picking up pace. Um, there's even talk about like Bulgaria, I think Cyprus. I mean, a lot of countries... Are, are getting them. Um, Ireland used to have one. I think it's over or it's changing as well. Um, so there are uh, really good companies, reputable companies that can give you most up-to-date information on current programs available. Um, I wouldn't, my suggestion is don't follow the online chatter, you know, work with a professional and actually inquire if you're, if you're interested, but residency through investment is huge. We see a lot of people buying in France. Um, we see people buying in Italy. Italy is a lot lower price point. So it's really enticing, you know, for a lot of people. Plus it's Italy. I mean, come on. 
Um, we see, especially from, from New York, um, we see a lot of people investing in, in um, brands. That's a, a big sort of, we, we follow where the money goes. So we see money leaving New York and going to France a lot. Croatia as well. Croatia has been really popular, again, with more higher end um, individuals. But there's so many reasons why this happens, um, you know, reduced taxes, lifestyle, um, sometimes just for secure investment. Um, I can give anyone more information if you're interested in this. Also, I have a lot of realtors who contact me and say, hey, my client is interested in Portugal. I know nobody in Portugal. What do you recommend? And then I'll ask a few questions such as, you know, is there an area? Is there a timeline? What are they looking to do? And then I can happily send you a list of contacts, people that I've personally met and my clients have worked with, not just people I find online, whether it's realtors, whether it's um, tax advisors, whether it's people that can help with golden visa and attorneys. Um, we've built a pretty amazing global network in a lot of different countries. So if you if you or your clients are looking for suggestions for contacts for information, you know, don't hesitate to do that. I think a lot of realtors in the U.S. are sometimes missing out on the referral opportunity with this. Um, so definitely stay educated. There are ways to still help your your client, your American client when they're making that jump over and to um, still be part of that process for them and guide them. So if you are looking for contacts in any of those countries or others that I might not have mentioned, don't hesitate to reach out because I probably know someone there and I continuously am involved in events that highlight um, that highlight different countries. So that's, I think, something that will continue on happening, especially with, um, like I mentioned, it being a presidential election year. I think we'll see a large number of Americans continuing to invest abroad. So watch this space. So with, with Money Corp, um, I'm one of, of course, the, the people that you're welcome to reach out to. But like I said, we have offices and teams in lots of different countries. We do have a partner program. We encourage you to not just say to your clients, I've heard of Money Corp, they're cool. Give them a try and send them a website. I don't, I mean, do that if you'd like. But I think, um, I think it's much, much better for you and the client if you make a personal introduction. Again, it shows the client you have a group or you have a contact that you can trust it makes such a difference when you say i know eva with money corp she can have a chat with you about this versus saying money corp's a good company um not only am i personally going to speak with your clients and keep you updated on the process but i'd love to chat with you about your international business what you're hoping to do i might make suggestions um, on people you should connect with organizations you can join whatever it might be um, we have personalized landing pages that you can add on your website. We have um, different tools I can help you with. For example, if you're doing a listing with a foreign national, well, your foreign national is not thinking in dollar signs, right? They're thinking in their home currency, whether that's Canadian dollars, euros, pounds. So I can help you create a little bit of a, a listing comparison whereby it can show if you sell today, you have this much US dollar proceeds. This is what you can get in your home currency. Here's some information on the exchange rate movements. I think that adds so much more to that listing presentation when you're working with foreign national seller. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, I can certainly get you that. And I truly think it really is an added level of security when moving money, whether it's inbound or outbound. We can instantly see, track, give information on how the money got sent, when it got sent, where it got sent. Um, I've had so many now referring partners of mine who became referring partners because something went wrong in their transaction and they went, I'm never going to do this again. So I've had clients, uh, realtors and clients that have called me and said, oh, we didn't use Money Corp. We use the bank and the bank in Dubai sent the money, you know, last Tuesday, but we don't know where it is. I mean, I can't help at that point because we're not involved. But if we were involved, that would never happen. It can't happen because we're in control of moving the money. Um, so bear that in mind. Um, and if you have any questions on this, let me know. We give you updates, we pay referral fees, but for us, the number one thing is to make sure that the clients are getting the best exchange rate and the best service. If any of you would like to sign up for our daily exchange rate email, um, this is like a, this is not the whole email. This is just a portion of what it looks like, but it can pop into your inbox uh, every morning, I think around 9 a.m. Delete it some mornings, you know, look at it more other mornings. But I think once you're constantly seeing it day after day, you'll notice, hey, the euro went down. Hey, this currency went up and it can only improve 
your conversations with your international clients. And again, it could make you think, oh, who should I reach out to? Canadian dollar went up. Let me contact my Canadian buyers. Oh, US dollar went up. Let me reach out to these people that were thinking of selling. So the more you stay aware of this, the better for you. And this is just exchange rates, but our website also provides daily and weekly um, market updates as well, where it's a little bit more in depth. And in my opinion, it's written in a non-Bloomberg way. It's written in a very easy to understand way, even if you're not a currency exchange expert, you know, you can sort of easily look through and understand what's happening, what's moving the market. And again, good information that you can share with your clients. Connecting the dots, I, I really think this slide is important. Um, I think that anyone who is wanting to work with international clients or already working with international clients really should have this set of experts. Um, and I don't mean like know a company, but have a person, have them on your in your phone, have someone you can call or text when you need to. Um, they're not listed in you know specific order, but I really think you should know these people and you should have someone to contact as and when you have a question, not when the problem arises. And again, if you are working with people that are doing outbound transfers, I can help connect you with those professionals abroad in different countries. But look through and see who you currently have. Make sure that the people you have, although you might love them and they might be amazing with your domestic business, make sure that they can actually help your foreign nationals as well. It's really, really important. Um, my contact is right here. This is my personal cell phone number, my email address. Um, I'm not scary. Um, text, call, email. I would love to chat with you. Um, we can set up a Zoom. If I come over to your area, we can grab coffee. But um, I think I would love to learn more about your goals with international business, perhaps see you at a global event and shake your hand. Um, if you have a client that you think might benefit from our services, you can always include me on an email or call me. Um, and then I can quickly explain how we can help, if we can help. Um, and if for some reason we cannot help, again, I won't waste anyone's time and, and let you and the client know. But um, I do encourage you, if you've not previously looked into this, the international payment world is, is really important. Um, and again, any questions that you might have, let me know. I really want to make sure I leave time for questions. Usually there are loads of questions that come my way. So um, please, I would like to open it up um, and see if there's any questions coming from, from the group. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much, Eva. There are a few. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, I think a point of clarification, one of our attendees is wondering, you had mentioned that the currency went up on the email notification. Do you mean that the currency from that country went down in digits? Uh, are you, are we, is it about the daily exchange rate email? Is yes. that what we're talking about? Oh, okay. So when I mean that, it, for example, if I'm talking about, if you look at the Euro US dollar exchange rate, right? And if I say the, the exchange rate went up, like the Euro went up, that usually means always one currency goes up, one currency goes down. So if the Euro went up, that means the dollar went down or vice versa. So if you keep looking at it each day, you'll start noticing these things quite easily, even if you glance at that email for one or two minutes. And it might prompt you to contact your clients from Europe or your sellers from Canada. Um, and if you have a question about it and are wondering why did it go up, is it going to go down further, reach out to me because I, if, if I don't know the answer, I can turn to the expert currency dealers next to me and they can quickly give me a full on, you know, detailed answer on why the Canadian dollar is moving and what they think is happening with it, which is why we encourage conversations uh, between the client and the currency dealer, just so they can stay updated. And by the way, when I say currency dealer, they're not going to be calling your client every day saying, do you want to trade money? Um, it's not that type of thing. They're there for support, for information, and they're really there to make sure the client feels a little more educated than they were before, a little more comfortable in the currency exchange world. They're not scary. They're not going to use big terms and um, force your clients to trade if they're not ready. Quite the opposite. We want to make sure they, um, they have a really good, comfortable experience with us. Kind of a, a follow-up question just a little bit, um, which is probably more of like a generalization. Of course, trends exist. And um, 
do, are there trends with currency exchanges? Like, is it better to transfer your money in November versus December? I know you had mentioned the political aspect of it in, in election years, it fluctuates. Like, is there like a rule of thumb a little bit? I know how like, you know, when you talk about like, you should buy your flight on a Tuesday or, yeah. you know, you should do this on that day. I don't think that applies um, in our world because it's so sense it's so sensitive to global economics. It's so sensitive to global news. I mean, just look at the last few years. Nobody could have expected all the crazy things that that went on, and there's probably more crazy things to come. And those are the big news, right, that everybody knows about. But each day, there's little things that make the market tick as well that are not so obvious to us. Um, and it's no, I wouldn't say there is. It's not like I'll tell anybody, you know, December is a great time. January is a great time. We can look back, you know, on the last five years and I can see when we trade more, when we trade less. But when we start looking into why, we usually can narrow it down to, well, you know, this was going on in Europe or interest rates were doing this. The, the big things that are moving the market right now is really um, inflation and interest rates right now. Those are the two things. And of course, we have the presidential election year coming. So how we deal with that as the year goes on is really how, like if interest rates go down, you know, like people are saying they will, that will certainly have an impact on the, on the US dollar. But there's always the if, right? So that's why I suggest to the clients, speak with the currency dealers, stay up to date. There is no reason why anybody should be moving an amount you know, a large amount of money the day before they're closing. Why? Why are you subjecting yourself to getting whatever you're going to get on that day? Um, so no, I would say it's it's very sensitive to what's going on in the world. It really is. It's ever changing. Um, you know, the only thing I can say is the market's closed on weekends, you know, <laughs> so no trades happening on the weekends. It's a live market. It's always ticking. If we have a client that contacts us now and gets a quote, and if they call us, you know, later this afternoon and to get to get a quote for the same amount, the quote will be different. You know, the, the, it will be slightly different because it's based off a live market. So no, just stay up to date, speak with that dedicated currency dealer, be aware of world, you know, economics and news a little bit or let the currency dealer update you because it's an, it's an ever changing world. <laughs> that was actually a pretty good segue to my next question. How long does it take to set up a, uh, a money corp account? And how quick does the exchange and transfer take? Is it uh, like immediate, 24 hours a week? Mm -hmm. So good question. The Money Corp account setup is, I would say, three to five minutes. Super easy. I joked I was trying to sign up my son for baseball. It took me 20 minutes to sign up my son for baseball, and it took me three minutes to open a Money Corp account. So, and it had more documents required for baseball than for than for this. So, just I don't know, um, but um, <laughs> yes, it's a very quick and easy process. Um, and as far as booking the exchange rate, that can be done as the client is on the phone with their currency dealer. The currency dealer will give a live quote, and it sounds something like this: like. You want to purchase 100,000 euros. So right now that will cost you exactly this many US dollars and you can get exactly this exchange rate. Would you like me to book that in for you? If the client says yes, the currency dealer says this is a legal and verbally binding agreement. He presses a button and he buys those euros for the client instantly. Um, so it happens right then and there on the phone and the client can then pay for that contract in the next few days. Mm -hmm. So it gives the client ability to literally look at the news see the market moved, pick up the phone, book the exchange rate. They don't have to have the money on account with us. They can instantly take advantage of the market. Um, getting funds into your money corp account varies from client to client. Some clients get it to us in a matter of an hour. Some clients get it to us next business day. You know, it just depends on their U.S. bank, but it's a domestic payment. So really it should be one to three hour job. The time for Money Corp to send the payment to the recipient varies on where the money is going to. You know, what is the end country where the client where the funds are going to? Generally speaking, if the client instructs us in the AM US time to send their payment to Europe, it will arrive in Europe same day. If the client instructs us in the afternoon US time, send my money to Europe, it will arrive there next morning. That's just because of the time difference. But it's still a pretty, pretty quick process. We can also have a client pre-set a payment. Like they can be like, I'm going on a cruise, but I'm buying a property in France next week. So can you make sure that payment goes on, you know, March 30th, have a nice day. And we can pre-set it for them. So it can get done on a specific date and time. 
Um, is, is there such thing as payment options? Like if um, if you needed five hundred thousand euro, can you can you like finance that or or something like that? Are there any sort of payment options? Oh, I see. So as far as financing goes, we don't do that. However, we can recommend financing um, for, you know, different companies to clients. Now, we do have something called a forward contract where Money Corp locks in the rate of exchange for up to two years. So in that example, let's say the client says, I want to purchase 100,000 euros and I want to lock in that rate of exchange right now. We don't require them to pay us the full amount of dollars for mm -hmm. us to purchase that contract. We only require 10% deposit. So they're only sending us 10%. Money Corp buys the full amount of euros instantly for the client. And when the end of that contract comes, let's say they've locked in for a year. When the end of that contract comes, we say, please pay us the rest of the 90% and we'll release your euros. This is really great because it allows clients to keep their money in investment accounts, to use it as they wish. Meanwhile, their exchange rate is locked in and protected. Yep. Um, this really makes sense for people that are, you know, obviously earlier stages. We see a lot of higher net worth individuals love to do forward contracts. And especially when you see something interesting happen on the news, that's when we hear our phones ring in the office and you have those clients going, market's moving. How do let's, let's lock in something. What, you know, what do you suggest? Um, and those conversations happen with the currency dealer. So there are different ways. Um, but as far as financing, we don't offer it, but there are certainly, certainly a lot of options for, for that, especially if it's Americans investing in Europe, there's a lot of, of products available for that. It happened to me that I have a client that was transferring money from Honduras to buy a property here. So, uh, and you see the bank, he was taking a mortgage too, and the bank wants to know how the money is coming, where the money goes and shows everything. So he put the money in the bank in Honduras and when he get the money here, it was total different amount. <laughs> and it was missing some fee, $50 or something, 75 or something that uh, it was in the between. So we call one bank, we call the other bank and nobody, it seems like it was a third company doing the transfer and that the bank has to do a big thing trying to prove the, the, the that money was for a fee or something. So how we handle money card that like, because this one was a very hard time for the, for the bank to prove all this money. Like they have to match every sense right mm -hmm. the amount of times i've heard a similar story i'd be rich um that's and that's a big reason why we have clients start using us because they've learned the hard way so this happens often you have an, an international investor who's bringing money to the u.s and the money arrives in title like you said 50 dollars short um this is because as the money travels this is when money corp's not involved in the process as the money travels it's there's sometimes intermediary banks there's sometimes banks that don't support international wires. So they'll route the payment to a bank that does, and then it'll come to the US bank and they'll have an incoming wire fee and everybody just takes their cut. And then it arrives to title $50 short and there's nothing anybody can do about it. And everyone says it wasn't me, it wasn't me. It was oftentimes the intermediary bank that you don't even know was part of the transaction. So when Money Corp is, is part of the, the transaction, this cannot happen because there are no intermediaries we are the intermediary. So again, we control exactly how the funds are moving and going. If we have funds coming from even, uh, this oftentimes also will happen with higher risk jurisdictions. So there are some countries around the world that are listed as high risk, there's medium risk, there's low risk, and then you have sanctioned. And this is not Money Corp labeling it, this is financial institutions labeling it that way. And oftentimes you'll have money coming into the US from a high risk country and it's completely allowed and normal for when that money comes into the U.S., the, for the U.S. bank to hold that payment and to review it for as long as their heart desires, right? And this can derail your closing. When Money Corp's part of the transaction and the money's coming from a high-risk jurisdiction, by the time it's coming into the U.S., it's not coming from the high-risk jurisdiction. It's already gone through Money Corp, so now it's entering as Money Corp payment. So it doesn't look like a bad high risk payment. It just looks like Money Corp sending a payment. Um, so it helps with that as well. But for us, we are the intermediary. We're not using any additional companies or banks to move the money. So we always can ensure that if we tell the title company you're getting 
hundred thousand, they're getting a hundred thousand, not a cent short, um, because there's no one to take that cut in the middle. But yes, I've heard that happen a lot, unfortunately. Um, with your example of Honduras, I cannot help Money Corp cannot help in that example. But my suggestion is start the process really early, send a little more. You know, probably I would I would think that somebody would take that fee, so I would safely just send an extra hundred just to be on the safe side. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> but no, that cannot The problem is money. not proof. Where is the money? So that's the problem with the bank. The bank needs to prove where it goes this $50 or whatever it was. So it won't show up. Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't show up, show up uh, anywhere. <laughs> so when we send proof, um, whenever a client um, sends a payment out of Money Corp, regardless of where it's going, there's an actual proof of payment document generated that says, you know, the exact time stamp, the exact amount, which account it's going to, which account originating from, um, and we can provide that to realtor, to title, to everybody and say, hey, guys, X amount of dollars on your way, just sent, you know, confirm that you've received. So there's a lot more transparency and communication going on. Um, but yes, that unfortunately sometimes can happen. Just start early questions? and send a little extra. I see there's a client that uh, somebody in the chat room yeah. that are you in Jamaica, Bahamas, Barbados. So we can help. So we don't have physical offices in those locations, but we can support transfers in those countries. Jamaica, we can support to and from. Um, some countries, we can only send a payment to the country, not from the country. And again, that's more so because of um, currency flow regulations, specific country regulations. With international clients, with international client payments, oftentimes there's a lot of gray areas. You might tell me my client lives in Colombia, but the money's coming from France and the aunt from here is helping and, you know, money's coming and moving everywhere. I mean, that's quite normal. So I would suggest to contact me and quickly tell me this is what's happening. And I'll quickly tell you yes or no or no. Um, because I don't have a list. Somebody might say, do you have a list of where you can move money from and to? No, because there's too many factors involved. Where is the client resident of? Where is the money coming from? Those are two different things where the client lives and where the money originates from. So oftentimes if I send you a list, you might look at the list and go, oh, they can't do that. Where in reality we can, it just depends on where your client is a resident of. So always feel free to check with me specifically and I will tell you yes, no, and, and how, and I won't waste anyone's time if we cannot help. Um, and plus things can change. For example, Russia, we were able to help with Russia until we couldn't. So based on world, politics and, and goings on, we might be able to help one country one year and not the next. So always, always check with me and I'll tell you yes or no. Um, I see a question as well, which says, what is the golden visa program? Um, the golden visa program is essentially make gaining residency through investment. And there are lots of different countries offering it, but the golden visa program varies from country to country. Uh, amounts, documents required, what you get, the length of time. Um, there are certain companies that specialize in, in those things and they can guide you through depending on which country you're interested in. Or if you're not at all sure which country you're interested in, they can give you information and suggestion and have a chat with you about this. Um, and if anyone is, you know has already um, a country in mind, send me a message and I'll be happy to give you some more information or connect you with a contact in that country. But it's a really popular program and I anticipate more and more countries to start offering it as well. Um, what documentation is required for a foreign national to open a Money Corp account? So most of the time, your cl uh, the client, regardless of where they're from, they can start our online registration online. Sometimes our system is quite sophisticated and able to onboard clients from lots of different countries. So sometimes the address and identity verification might work automatically in the background. And sometimes the client might be prompted to upload one proof of ID and one proof of address. It gets reviewed by our compliance team. Um, and But that's really the most we might ask. A proof of ID could be a clear picture of driver's license or passport. And a proof of address could be a utility bill, for example. Um, so nothing too crazy. I would say for, for example, an American client setting up, nine times out of 10, the address verification will work immediately online and, and very fast. For a European client, same thing. So 
most of the time it's a three to five minute process. If they have to upload documents, again, take a smartphone, take a picture, upload it, really easy process. Um, do you support fund transfer from Israel to New York? Yes, we do support transfers um, to and from Israel. We do, so good question. And um, if you have you know, any other specifics, reach out, but we do, I think most of the countries that you hopefully are working with and thinking of, we can support. The ones that are sanctioned are probably not going to surprise you. If I tell you we can't help, I don't even know of another company that can't help. It might be a matter of country regulation or them having to go through a bank in those cases, but I'll try to help whenever I can, <laughs> but please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. If you have a client, call, text, email. Um, if you're wondering to learn more about international business or trends or you're meeting with a Canadian buyer next month and you want to know more about the Canadian dollar, I'm happy to help. So just keep the conversation going. And I think what that's amazing. all of our questions. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Daniela? What is the, like your presentation is amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me. My pleasure. I actually am creating a CE class um, for this. So it's going to be a full two hour currency exchange deep dive. <laughs> um, Perfect. So we we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I will let you know when that's live. But I really appreciate you having me. I hope that people watching learned something new, opened up their eyes a little bit more in the international process. And um, I do encourage you to really build that international dream team, go to global events, network. You never know who you're going to meet and slowly things will start connecting and your mind will expand because I really say global is like a family. Once you really jump into global, you do join the global family and everyone's so supportive and helpful. That's so true. That's so true. For me, it's the same. Global is a family. And mm -hmm. it's, it's different, the communication with everybody, right? Yep. It's and everybody global, collaborating. Global clients are, I think, the most loyal. You help one international, oh my gosh, you're going to help their family, their cousins, their neighbors. <laughs> That's true. You won't be able to get rid of them. So make sure you give them a really good And experience. even if you don't speak the same language or you're not the same culture, they they when they trust you, they follow you. And that, oh, that's yes. what... Yes. Yeah. Sometimes you're going to want to get rid of them and you can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's true too. As we wrap up, <laughs> as we wrap up our webinar, we thank you again, Naiva, for sharing your invaluable insights and expertise. Whether investing, emigrating, or simply managing overseas expenses, informed decisions begin with understanding the intricacy of currency dynamics. Thank you all for joining us today. We'll see you next week for our last webinar of Global Success Month, where our topic will be international trade missions and how traveling can expand your connections and real estate business. Thank you all. For Thank you. Being. Thanks, Daniela. Thanks, Evan. Take care.